Before we start this week's video, I have an important question to ask everybody. Are you a Nintendo person, a PlayStation person, or an Xbox person? I think growing up, everyone had their select devices. Now I used to gravitate towards Nintendo, but for a while I was definitely a PlayStation kid, but I was never an Xbox kid. And everyone would always be like, hey man, you playing Halo? And I was like, I don't, I don't know what Halo is. And I'd go over to friends' places and they'd be like, go, 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 go. And I just like, I would die every single time. What's going on everybody? My name is Chris Howe and in this week's episode, we're doing something completely different than video games. We're gonna be talking about handheld movement versus gimbal movement versus motorized slider movements and paring them down in the ultimate showdown of competition. It's not actually a competition, but the reality is that all these pieces of gear and movements have a time and a place but I thought it'd be fun to have them compete against each other in this little video here. So number one, let's do the most basic movement of all time. The pan and the tilt. How come to clients, when you're on set, every shot is a pan movement? Uh, can we get a pan of that car? Do you mind if you get your gimbal and do a quick little pan? Let's get a pan. Let's get some, some pan shots. Let's get a, a quick shot of that pan doing a pan shot of the pan, because this is a pan commercial about pan, putting Pam on pans. Interesting. All right, here's a little filmmaking 101 education session. This is actually what a pan shot is. Take notes, clients. You have a single pivot point, and you're gonna start pivoting your camera from left to right, or from right to left. The next shot will be a tilt shot, where you have that single pivot point, and you go from top to bottom, or from bottom to top. Simple, are you following along? Good job, client. All right, so now that you guys know what those shots are, let's set the benchmark for handheld, gimbal, and a motorized slider. Okay, battle number one, showdown number one, shot number one. We're gonna be doing handheld. The settings for this today are gonna be 4K, 24 frames a second so that we can really get the highest quality. I am going to put a strap on this camera so that we can make it a little bit smoother so that we can like push against it. And then we're gonna also breathe in like a sniper, like and try to get the shot. So let's see if we can do the benchmark test of a pan and tilt. Man, I haven't done one of those in a while. That didn't look that good. Let's try a couple more. That's so much harder than it looks, dang. In my head I was like, I'm gonna crush this, but no. Wow, that was the worst one out of them all. Jeez Louise, who's Louise? <laughs> Tilting time. Foot forward, let's try to create as much stabilization within the body. Obviously try to use gravity in this situation because it's easier instead of going against gravity, using gravity to like come down. If you need to, you can always reverse that shot if you need to go from bottom to top. I mean, not great, not terrible. Chernobyl. It's not great, but it's not terrible. 3.14 on the Ronkin meter. Okay, sorry. All right, so I just switched to 120 frames a second, but now that my shutter is one over 250, because we're shooting at 1080, 120 frames a second, my ISO is 3200, which means we're gonna be introducing a lot more noise into this shot. Luckily, the sensors on these Sony cameras are pretty decent, but that's the compromise. So final verdict for that, uh, handheld for panning and tilting, ew. So I've switched this back to 4K um, from handheld because I'm confident that this will be like a really stable pan and tilt shot. I'm using the joystick, which means that I can actually like choose the exact position of where the shot will be. And let's get a nice little movement going there. Yeah, it's nice. All right, so now we're gonna do a tilt. Easy, did it in two shots, done. Okay, it's 
time for the uh, the slider, which as you can see is really big. You also are probably wondering with the, uh, the tilt as well as the pan, uh, why are we doing this with a slider? Because it typically shouldn't have that movement in there. Uh, at least with the Rhino Arc 2, it has this little movement where you can tilt and you can also pan. Typically a slider does not do this, but with the one that we are using and the one that we have access to, this one can do it, so we're gonna do it. Right away, I can tell that this is the best because you don't have any like up and down movement. It feels the smoothest. Even just with my hand touching this, I can feel that it's perfectly smooth at the right time. You can also set keyframes, which is a super nice feature if you just wanna be able to be like, set it and forget it. All right, the next movement that we'll be doing is a dolly movement. This is also known as a push in or pull out. Now, I just want to clarify that when we are pushing in, we are physically pushing that camera closer to the subject or the object that you're shooting, not zooming. I wanna slide, but I'm noticing that my skin is kind of like catching a little bit on the wood here. So I'm deciding between two different things to use to put like the camera on to help slide up. This one is a little quicker. This one gives me a bit more resistance, which means I could kind of do like a slower shot. So like, we'll, we'll do both and see which one looks better. We're doing 4K and... It's cool because you can get really close to the wood and it adds far more dramatic movement. Okay, uh, gimbal time. Uh, this will be a little bit more challenging because I can't get as low to the, uh, I guess the wood on this table so that we can get really that dramatic movement that we got with the handheld. It's gonna be a lot harder to hold it because all the weight of the camera is gonna be out here. So we're gonna do our best with some sort of like grip like this where we can strong hold it and then we can slide forward. The table is kind of getting in our way here. So it's gonna stop the shot a little bit earlier. So we'll see if we can like get nice and close on it. We're gonna try our best. All right, not bad. The last one was like decent, keyword decent. Not great, decent. What are my feelings after using the gimbal? Uh, one, I'm tired. A lot more movement. So both the handheld had a lot of movement. This had a lot of movement. Let's see how the slider does. Okay, so we got the slider set up here. We got the short slider. I think this is like the 24 inch. Instantly, I've noticed we have limitations. The camera has to be this high because we need room for the slider and we need room for this head. Why don't we add like the extra little movement in there where we can like tilt down and try to make it a touch more interesting and just see how that shot looks. Shorter distance but it looked perfect. The compromise though is it is higher, so we had to add the extra movement of it going down. Also, we didn't get the same distance. So to compensate for the height for this second attempt at this slider shot, we just raised the camera up on an Apple box, which actually gives us a bit more distance. Let's see what that looks like. And the last movement, the arc movement which is basically a trucking movement where the camera's moving from left to right, which is different than a pan where it's fixated on one point. What you're actually doing is physically moving your camera from here to here or from here to here, but we're gonna add one more thing on top of that where we're gonna actually add a pan to that trucking movement, which ultimately creates the arc. Trucking plus pan, 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 E equals arc. Okay, so this definitely has to be slow-mo because uh, I just did a quick test at 4K 24 frames a second. That's not gonna work. There's like too many axes I'm moving along here uh, that will introduce shake. So I definitely need to minimize that as much as possible. So we're gonna go slow motion 120 frames a second for this. It's cool because you can be like so nimble 
with this. And there's such great parallax in the background. That actually like looks really sweet. I mean, you get like nice and low. Also the surface worked really well. There was like no friction on this uh, bamboo fully desk. Links below. Uh, just something I noticed originally I was holding the camera like this with my hand, which kind of creates a little bit more shake. If I just put this flat on the ground with this plate on top, it looks a lot better. So we have the gimbal set up. I can't get super close to the ground and I'm gonna like knock into this little rivet that we have, this power station here. So I'm gonna have to go further back and then make our shot a bit more compressed. So I'm at 35 mil right now. I can already sense that there's a lot of this movement. It looks more dramatic, obviously, with the parallax when the shot is zoomed in more. Okay, I'm gonna have to like do the ninja move. All right, so the gimbal shot, not bad. Uh, the longer lens made for like a more dramatic parallax in the background and parallax is basically when you just have the background moving really quickly as you're like orbiting around a subject or an object. So parallax looked good because it was a longer lens. But again, I'm gassed out a little tired because I have to like hold it at a weird angle. I can't get too close to the object because again, the desk is in the way. So far, I'm actually happier with the handheld shots than the gimbal shot. Just set up the slider. I'm gonna switch from 120 frames a second down to 24 frames a second and then bring that up to 4K because I do not need to rely on slow motion to make this shot steadier. It looks great. Maybe we'll bring these risers down a little bit. All right, let's start this move now that we've got it down at the eye level that looks good. All right, we brought the slider a little bit lower. It looked way more cinematic. Some of the things that I noticed though is that it was a little sticky in the center as well as the object and the subject that we were focusing on, which was this Nikon camera, it would kind of go off center a little bit. So you might have to fix that with keyframing and post. Those are some of the things that I've noticed with the slider, but that was 24 frames a second, 4K, and that looked pretty dang good. Let's bring all these shots from all the different movements that we did and compare them now in post. All right, welcome to our edit bay. We have put all our shots back to back, our handheld versus our gimbal versus our motorized slider. Let's see how they all shape up in our showdown. Not the best, but passable. Up next, we got the gimbal. Totes would use that. Also, I would never say totes again. And we got our slider. Gimbal and slider basically look the same. All right, next movement, tilt. Tilt from the gimbal. This is nice if you wanted to hold on the shot a little longer. Let's say you're using some sort of cinematic movement. Up next, our dolly movement, coming in on that camera, that old vintage Nikon, ew. Up next, the gimbal. <laughs> that was so quick and so bad. Yeah, there, there it is. That's the shot. Up next, the arc shot, starting off with the handheld in slow motion. Yo, that's actually like pretty legit. All right, up next we have the gimbal shot. I mean, it's fine. That's it, it's fine. And up next we have the slider with the arc movement. Classic, looks good. The shot's nice. Probably spend a bit more time on it, but honestly, I think in that situation, that handheld shot looked pretty sweet. All right, you guys have reached the end of this video. If you guys have learned something today, please press like. It actually makes a difference. Go down there, press all the buttons that you want, but that dislike button, that has like a little cage over it. Don't ever press that button, because when you press that button, these videos don't come, and you won't see another upload from Chris Howe, because he had to go get a job somewhere else, because the algorithm was like, nobody likes these videos. No, destroy his career. Bye, Chris Al.
Bye. I don't know why I made the algorithm so sassy. If you guys have learned something, please subscribe, hit the bell to be notified for future videos. If you guys wanna pick up some presets, uh, I'm gonna be having a sale down below. Get 50% off everything in my store. If you guys wanna beef up your photos, if you wanna beef up your business with some budget templates, all that stuff is down there. There's some free things. I love you guys very much. Thank you for your constant support. Peace out. Well, <laughs> I ripped my bounty.